Good evening and a warm welcome to a cooked tour with Rocket and our first destination, the Basque Country. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Good evening and a warm welcome to a Cook's Tour with Rocket and our final destination of our autumn series, Korean street food. My name is Charlie Grant-Peterkin and I am joined, as ever, by our master, Mr. Ryan Stafford. Good evening, Ryan. Evening. You know what, Charlie? I'm getting used to that. I wait for the big intro. I'm really excited tonight. So welcome to everyone at home and welcome to you, Charlie. Good to have you here. And I'm very excited by this evening because we are cooking Korean street food. Um, and just a little bit of background about Korea. And well, let's start with the journey of how we got sure, here. Let's do that. So um, let's go back to the beginning of the tour. We started in Basque Country. Yeah. We then took our intrepid cooks to Istanbul. Istanbul. We, um, we then went on a bit of a jaunt down to the west coast of India to Kerala. We hopped across to Bali. We did. Before Outback. visiting the Outback, yes. Oh, testing times. We've been well, around, haven't we? We have got around. Here and we go. then we are now making our way up here. Northern to Hemisphere. Korea. That's it. There we go. So, welcome to Korea, everyone. Um, and as I'm sure you're all aware, Korea is situated um, between Chinese mainland. Um, and Japan, and actually sort of um, shares many of those sort of cultural characteristics. Um, its geography, it's a peninsula, it has a thriving fishing industry, um, and 70% of the land is actually forested mountainous terrain. Um, four distinct, distinct seasons, um, very hot summers, and of course very cold winters. So, um, Ryan, Korean street food, why are we yeah. ending this part of the tour on Korean street food? You, why Korean street food? Do you know what? And you're going to have to stop me because there's so much to say about Korea. And I think for me, again, all these destinations that we've been through, Charlie, over the past couple of months have been incredible. But for me, you know, it's a cold time of year now. We're in December. We want those comforting flavors, don't we? You know, we're all looking forward to Christmas, the big roast dinners and that. And do you know what? As well, I get the craving as well for spicy food, zingy food, mm. rich food. And that's what we're trying to do. But Korean food had to be now while it's cold. Yeah, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, it's going to be delicious. A bit of sort of um, zip and zing before exactly. um, the festive meals take um, effect. Um, great. So um, I think we should probably just crack on with some cooking. Shall let's we do, do that. that? Do you know what? I can't wait to get stuck in. Let's, let's yeah, do it. Let's do that. OK, um, let's have a quick um, run through of this evening's um, dishes. Ryan, what are we going to start with? Do you know what? Again, there's like an ongoing trend here between Outback and Korea. There is so much going on in my head to make it so easy for you guys at home to get so much out of Korea. We have got plentiful ingredients. Now, just touch on what we're going to be doing. We've got the incredible gochugang. Yes. Do I stand to be corrected? No. Gochugang glazed pork belly. Then we're going to do... 2.0, or if you joined us in the summer for the five spice tempura beans, we're going 2.0. We have got a tempura broccoli with incredible kimchi mayonnaise. We're going to be doing uh, some kimbap rolls, which is like a little sushi roll. We're doing an incredible salad. Game changer, guys. Your new winter salad has just arrived. And then to finish, we are going to do a very weird, a very strange, it wouldn't be a cook's tour without me doing a Ryanism style dish, which is mac and kimchi. cheese. Oh, that's so cool. There you have it. Lots, lots to do. Brilliant. Well, we're actually going to kick things off um, with a cocktail. So um, it's with great pleasure that we're going to welcome back um, Johan Svensson from Drinks Fusion. Um, and he is going to create um, a rather special cocktail for you guys at home. So, um, Johan, do come and join us. Welcome. Hi, Johan. How are you? Hi there. Good to be back. Come and um, to be back. take centre My stage. My favourite person. <laughs> Especially when he brings alcohol. I say it every time. But what a way to start. It tends to be popular, yes, I know, I know. So yeah, we're doing something uh, very exciting uh, this evening, um, something a little bit different. 
using um, so a little bit of a, um, once again using sort of obviously regional ingredients and etc. And we're basing it on a um, spirit um, called Jinro, uh, Jinro, which is the soju. Okay. And it's very popular in the region, to say the least, and also um, it's actually the biggest selling spirit brand in the world. Oh wow! I feel like I've seen it before. It's got one of those labels, hasn't it? I feel like I've seen it's, it a lot. If yeah, you, I, I mean, it's 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 one of those things. It's not particularly sort of big in the UK and parts of Europe, but in Asia and etc. It's it's um, it's um, massive. Cool. So I think something like 200 million bottles last wow. year or something wow. <laughs> in sales. Wow. So something like exactly, it's full time. But it tends to be um, so. It's made. It's, you would say maybe it's a little bit like um, uh, a vodka in the sense that it's really clean and um, fresh in flavour. Okay. But it's made distilled from rice wow. and okay. um, sweet potato and those kind of things. Uh, this tend to be quite a big mix of grains. Um, and uh, uh, rather than just what we use, tend to, which tends to be just our sort of barley sure. and et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And stuff. So that makes it quite different. So it's really light. It's quite often drunk um, alongside your meal, your barbecue or whatever, next to a beer or whatever, because it's only about 24% ABV. Yeah. Is it quite dry? It's dry, completely bone dry. Perfect, perfect. So it's really, yeah. really lovely dry spirit. It's got a lovely soft creaminess to it yeah. as well. Um, so we've done a, it's sort of an iced tea which I think uh, is also very sort of Korean using green tea and a homemade uh, yuzu cello. Wow. So it's a uh, fresh yuzu that's been sitting the peels, sitting extracting wow. in neutral grain alcohol, so vodka, and a little bit of sugar. And it's been sitting there for a couple of months that's to extract. Incredible. To get a really fantastic flavor, you get the yuzu, that enormous, uh, big, uh, potent aroma. And a little bit of poire williams. Amazing. To get a lovely pear flavor, which also really uh, sort of typical f uh, to the region as well. Particularly a lot of the sort of bottle can drinks and yeah, things yeah. That, the, that you get in Korea will have pear and orange yeah, and things in them. It's strange as well. I've had some of those, you get like, little chunks in them. Do you know what? I'm <laughs> exactly, always obsessed yeah. with uh, listening to how you make these. Like a mad scientist. Slightly, yes. <laughs> and stuff. Amazing. You, you can say that. And then also a little bit of fresh citrus. So, but we're serving them a little bit different today. So you will have a uh, couple of jars in your boxes and it's quite simple so we'll open them up and uh, luckily you know i have two people here to help me you do a little bit of shaking oh I? absolutely oh, you straight out the jar oh well why not why not yeah. you know we're doing a little bit of a uh, simple version here today. So this is an improvisation on a, on a cocktail shaker, just using Ex a jam jar. Yes, exactly. And you can sort of Cheers. take it, here you go, just oh, okay. shake it. And you can sort of take it uh, on a picnic or whatever, <laughs> if, yeah. you, if you pre mix it something. It really works. Uh, it, it doesn't replace a cocktail shaker by, by any means, but um, it, it does make a dip. When you're doing something like a light drink, like an iced tea, yeah. where the, the dilution isn't really as vital to the balance of the drink, then it's absolutely fun. Uh, fine to to uh, um, to use uh, um, something like a jam jar or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, whereas if you're making something like a margarita or a daiquiri or something, you d I really think you shake. should need a Ready? shake. Ready? Ready? Go for it. Shake it to wake it. Oh, you set. Shake you it. Made, you made a lovely infusion. <laughs> but you're coming on here, where you haven't even brought glasses, and we're doing all your work. Well, exactly. well it is. You know, I've got to work I've got smart, to take the chance. Say, yeah? you know? <laughs> exactly. Smart, not harder. <laughs> it's all about delegation. How, how, what we're we looking for here. Yeah. So so just, uh, maybe about ten seconds, and then okay. what? What you tend to do? You s start seeing this sort of frosting on the uh, on the, t yeah, uh, like the jar. Exactly, and you feel it, and you start having this really the the temperature really going down. And you sure. know it's kind of ready. Yep. But the trick is as well, you should have some ice cubes left. It shouldn't get completely watery. Okay. And then awesome. we sort of open right. these up. The lids off. And then you got a whole range of lovely garnishes in your. Uh, um, Boxes, so you can just sort of improvise sort of slightly freestyle. a little bit. Freestyle, exactly. It's some wonderful colours. Winging it, as I say, with all my experience. You know, uh, <laughs> something like that. Good. It's yeah, I think it looks sexy, isn't it? pretty cool. So you got some. So serving it in the jam jars too. Yeah, why not? So and then you could have a straw, you could not, whatever you prefer. But I think, you know, something like this, particularly also with this lovely roast geranium that you have, such a potent flavour. Mm. It's just lovely to drink from it. So you know. Brilliant. Have a, oh, have a set of that. Yeah, of course. It smells That's amazing. It looks it's, like it's really clean. Mm. It's almost like the user comes out a lot. Yeah, I love that. Oh, that's divine. It's really strange as well. You get like a, a clean kind of almost like iced tea uh, 
you know, real clean kind of hit and then a little tickle from the little spiky flower. Yeah, from the little, is that, exactly. Is that intended? That Delicious. is intended. That's so good. That's going to really sort of um, get everyone in the mood back home. Wow. Right? Yeah, exactly. And it's, a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not your sort of classic festive drink necessarily, but I think, you know, a nice tea with the style of food yeah. uh, here Plenty at Disney is absolutely drinking perfect for it. It's going to be enough perfect. mold wines and et cetera going on, yeah. I'm sure. So this thank is thank a perfect... Thank you so much, Johan. Johan, thank perfect you so degree. much. Now, um, tell us quickly, what's going on for your Christmas at Drinks Fusion? So, uh, yeah, we, we have uh, obviously converted our entire operation like everybody else in this industry. So we uh, are doing uh, our box deliveries and um, we're actually offering everyone this evening who cooks tour a one-off discount and uh, some information in your boxes but uh, we're doing basically a whole uh, lovely set of gift boxes where we're doing a chocolate and cocktail pairing um, set and also a Nordic Negroni set and you can either have just a trio or you can have you can also add the mixing kit um, where you have like the even the ice molds, the mixing glass, so you Incredible. really can have a fantastic uh, drink experience. That makes a great present and 15% off for um, a Cook's Tour um, participants. Um, and did, did I believe also that there actually is a limited um, number of um, cocktails left? Yes, so the Korean iced tea, uh, we do have uh, some left. So if anyone is interested, then uh, by all means, yeah. um, you know. So you take, while they're still there, then well, they're still there. Up. So drinks fusion website, and you'll be able to order some there for delivery um, very soon. Great, Brilliant. Johan. Thank you so much for thank these you. delicious drinks, and thank you for, for coming to join us again. Thank you, Johan. Thank you. Well, we wish you a happy Christmas. Likewise, happy Christmas. Amazing, happy Christmas. You soon. Brilliant. Well, there we go. My um, favourite dude, Johan. Always bringing drinks. Yeah, and Lovely. I think good to get the Perfect. cocktails up front, you know, to begin with, because that's going to sort of fuel us on for the yeah. cooking, isn't it? So, with that said, let's get cooking, Charlie. So, first things first, sushi. Yes. Have you made it before? I've never made sushi. No, I love, 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 love eating it. But I'm, you know, I sort of, I think lots of people are probably like me. We sort of um, freak out about cooking um, the rice because it's such an important part, isn't it? And do you know what? Work. I've heard so many stories about, you know, these kind of like ninja-esque kind of like chefs that have to wash rice for 10 years and then they move up to kind of like moving the rice from washing to cooking. Yeah. It's rubbish. You get the rice, you give it a little wash, you put it in the pan with the right amount of water and you cook it. And I want to take the stigma away from that. I want you guys out from this experience to gain a little bit of confidence and you, Charlie, and we'll cook some sushi rice today. Great. So we've got some rice here and this needs uh, going in the pan. So basically we've already washed the rice for you. So we just need to put that in a small pan. There we go. I am a little bit nervous today about putting all this together because we have put so much work into it, Charlie. It's going to be so delicious. But making it easy for you guys at home is not easy for me. But hopefully, <laughs> we're going to be very successful. So in we go with the rice. We've got 100 gram of sushi rice in there. Yep. And then I've got some little notes here because I tend to get a little bit mixed up from time to time. So much on my head, Charlie. So we've got for the rice that's been washed already. So if you're doing it again, follow the instructions on the pack, just a couple of little rinses, get rid of some of that starch so that the grains don't stick together when it's cooked. Okay, that's so in we go with one, it's 1 1.3 to one. Okay. So we've got 100, 100 grams and then we've got 130 ml of water. Cold yeah, water. Cold water. Or, or thereabouts, yeah, exactly. So that goes onto the stove. Yeah. And what we're looking for, Charlie, is just to bring that sushi rice up to a light simmer it's really, really simple, really, really slow. Bring it up over 10 minutes, let it cook, and then as soon as it comes up to the bowl, we're going to put a little lid or something just to cover it a little bit. And um, once the water's gone, we're just going to let it steam dry. And that's actually, you know, half the cooking process as well. I see. Okay. So that's yeah. your masterclass then in cooking sushi rice. That's it, pretty much. So we're going to pair that up. We're going to come back to that. Now, the reason is because it takes 10 minutes to kind of cook, 10 minutes to steam, and then we'll be ready. But we've got... So, yeah. Uh, a few more elements that are going to go with that, just in case you're wondering. We've got some nori rice and we've got some Korean pickles, which yeah, are fabulous. sat there looking pretty awesome. So, so we'll come back we... to that a bit later and um, yep. we're going to crack on with the pork now. We are. So you may see, Charlie, this incredible yeah. piece of pork here. Yeah, and then you it's may looking pretty fierce. And then you may be looking at this and thinking, that does not look the same. Well... Correct. What have you been up to in the kitchen? We at Rocket have been pushing the boundaries. Now, the reason why you've got this, I'll leave that there for everyone to see. Pork belly for me, my wedding day. What did yeah. I have? 
Well, I think there's a clue there. Pork belly, hey? It was all in the question, exactly. Yeah. Pork belly is one of my favorite things. And the reason is, if you like bacon, you like uh, slow braised meat, yeah. you know, fat on pork is delicious. And this yeah. is a great way to manipulate that and show you guys at home how delicious this cut is. And as you can see, quite opaque, quite strange looking, but we're going to add a glaze to that. And we've got the gochugang. Yeah. Gochugang, which is a Korean glaze. Um, no, it's actually a, a fermented red bean paste. Uh, which is chilies, a little bit of, I think a little bit of soya in there, and it comes, and it's almost like, uh, I should have brought some really, almost like a, a red kind of butter. And we've mixed that with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of rice wine vinegar, to make a really, really sexy glaze. And we're literally just gonna, for you guys at home, give you the most incredible cut of meat from this, with, oh with those few ingredients. So you've got at home a piece of pork like this, get it on the board, all we're gonna do is just slide into that fat with a nice sharp knife, and you'll feel it go in and then hit some meat. And you just want to push the knife, use the tip to mid knife, and we're just going to score it. And the reason we do that is when this goes in the oven, that fat, almost like a Christmas glazed ham, all on point for the season as well, mm. is going to kind of spread, crisp up, go a little bit gnarly, and really take that glaze into the little cuts. And then again, spin it round, maybe 90 degrees, 180, and then just kind of like repeat. Can you see the crisscrosses on there? Yeah. So you'll hit some meat. And the fat may be a little bit different. You may have a thinner, wider piece. You know, I've, I've been in uh, the last few days cooking 160 kilo of pork belly for you guys at home. Wow. So this has been cooking as well for about nine hours. Incredible. So it can take three to four hours. I like to go lower and slower. What sort slower. of temperature are you cooking at for nine hours? Um, so I start quite high, and yeah. we'll, we'll come to this in a minute. So what I, I start with a, a stock with some mirepoix yeah. that we, we say in the industry, which is carrot, celery, garlic, etc. That's a nice base. And then um, we've added some soy, some honey, uh, a few aromats, some black cardamom. You know I'm obsessed mm. with black cardamom, mm. some star anise, some cinnamon. And then we foil it up. Uh, I start it on about 240, 260, get it kind of like steaming, and then turn it down and go, um, you can do it maybe 130 degrees Celsius, but we took this down to about 80, 90 degrees. Wow. Really slow. And what you're doing is you're getting all those connected tissues in the pork belly to just break down and become like butter. Absolutely delicious. So really, really simple. Back we go, because we're gonna, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you. Guys, put your ovens on, 230 degrees Celsius. Oh, well done, well remembered. It's been a busy old week, but we are here, we're at the pinnacle. Yeah. Put your ovens on now. 230, nice and hot. And I tell you what, while we're waiting for those ovens, if everyone just wants to glaze, put your ovens on, and just glaze, and then we'll have a little chat about the pork, give you a yeah. chance for your ovens to come up a little bit. If your oven's not fully hot as well, I mean, this is a cooked piece of meat, so we're looking just to kind of like glaze it up heat it through and just glaze it up really, mm. so we're not looking to cook it. So it can go in an oven that's almost. And you're expecting it to crackle or just? Not necessarily, it's just gonna go a bit gnarly. Um, this should crisp up a little bit and then we'll, we'll, we'll maybe just add a few drops of water throughout the cooking. Wow. Um, and just kind of keep it, keep it going, yeah. So let's pop that aside. Okay. Now, Charlie, look at this beast. I wanna pick Tell it up. Tell me it's an about absolute this. Monster. So that piece of opaque looking pork that's yeah. been caught doesn't look like anything special, but before um, before we cut it up, this is what it looks like. So you've got the skin on top of here. Yeah. And this is uh, a free range pork from Suffolk from Jimmy Butler. He's uh, really into sustainable practices, absolutely incredible. Uh, the way he rears his animals, really cares for them, their diets. You've got a real special piece of pork. And uh, a couple of ways you can tell uh, that you've got a great, great piece of pork is the, the fat ratio. So if you've got loads of fat, it shows that it was just fattened up, fed, Maybe good food, maybe not. But if you've got like, uh, you know, streaky bacon, a nice piece of even mm. fat to meat ratio on the layers, kind of like fat, meat, fat, meat. If you look at it, it's quite even. You can tell that it's been slow grown. The, the, the pig has had a good diet, eaten it well when it wanted to, and had a jolly good old life to end up in my oven looking delicious like this. Brilliant. Yeah. So you can see as well, all this coloring it looks a little bit like uh, it's lacquered duck, like the Peking duck in uh, China because you can see it's slow, and all those um, aromats, the soy and everything, it's just kind of like glazed and infused the pork. And so you've cooked it with the skin on. Yeah, the yeah. skin on. So literally what we've done is uh, we've just taken the skin off. So if you cook it again with a recipe that we're going to supply after the show, um, you will end up just taking the skin. Yeah. Uh, what, what we've done here actually is we've cooked it, then we put it in the fridge and we just put a little bit of weight on top of a, with a tray, a little bit of weight, just to press it and just condense those layers of fat, just to make it a little bit more. That's a good idea. Yeah, delicious. And then it yeah. becomes a little bit compact, as you can see yeah. here. So yeah, and then when it comes out uh, of the fridge, chilled, you just want to peel it off. I mean, look at that. Heavens. Wow. And That's keep as much fat as you can. 
and then you're going to cut it into portions, big piece, small piece, little chunks to go in your pan, and it's going to look yeah. something like that. I've got a lot to say about curry. You have got a lot to say Honestly, about Honestly, you're going to have to wind me up and <laughs> or wind me down, more like. So I'm going to pop that in the oven, even though the oven's coming up. Yeah. We'll just pop that in. And it's fine for everyone at home to pop it in, even if you're yeah. to. Yeah, definitely. Okay. We just want that to tick over. And the pork belly, Charlie. Hands oh, up. OK. Well, this way or this way? Well, <laughs> Here we go. it's up to you. Spin okay, round this way. way. <laughs> oh, Spin okay. round this way. A <laughs> little bit of eye contact. Yeah, so right. on the animal as well, front shoulders yeah. here. And then you've got the hind yes, down here. Okay. We'll keep it above the waist, shall we, Charlie? <laughs> but the belly, people think it's literally the Ibirico pork and good wine that I have here. It's not. You've got the rib here, which is a big part. That's about a third of the actual belly port that you buy. And then as it comes down here, okay, you know where I'm going? Oh, yeah, easy. down here. And it's actually not the belly, as you know, but the whole side here. And it's almost like, if you think about that on beef, that's ribeye. Think about how delicious that is. So pork belly, it's called a pork belly because it's taken off in one cut and includes okay. the belly. But initially, it's the whole kind of side carcass. Absolutely delicious. There you I go, Charlie. Now. Yeah, you're right. all oh, done. <laughs> so enough talk about pork belly. On to the next. So our rice as well, Charlie. Yeah, should we have a look on that? Yeah, so you can see that's just coming up. And it's just sizzling away. Mm. So I'm going to be quite happy. Let me just bring it over here. I don't know if you guys can see. Let's bring it onto the board and you get a little overview. Yeah. So really, really important to see on there that the rice, you can see like little white dots in the rice. That means that it's still raw in the middle. It becomes tra translucent as it cooks. So um, liquid's almost gone. Would you yeah. say you just see a little, yeah, bit? a little bit? So I'm going to pop a little bit of a lid on, turn that heat down. We just want it to steam dry yeah. and get that rice cooked. And that's going to take about 10 minutes. The longer you leave it, the better. So I've got it on setting five out of nine. I'm going to set it down to one. We're going to check on that in another 10 minutes. Fine. Is that good? Pork. So most of the cooking's done is on that. Exactly. So we've talked about the pork like forever. I could go on about that because I absolutely love it. The rice is on. So shall we get on to our avocado salad? Yes, I think we should. So we talked about this menu, didn't we? And we we're chopping and changing a little bit in our minds. We had so many ideas for this. Me and Charlie, we like a good chinwag. We do. We love a good tell. sort of jam when it comes to cooking. We food. do. Do you know what? I'm going to... I just I keep just getting little wafts of this. I'm going to go for it. Go for it. I might join you. And everyone at home, too. Cheers mm. for the holiday season ahead. So yes. let's get a lovely plate here. This, while we're waiting for the pork belly and the rice, what better time to get this going? Nashi yep. pear. Know anything about it? No. Tell us everything you know about a nashi pear. I'm going to be really honest about nashi pear. It tastes almost of nothing. What, However, what's here? but you could say the same about pasta. You've got to think, guys. Think about rice, pasta, all these vehicles for flavours. Yes. Yeah, flour. Don't really taste of anything. Start adding a bit of sugar and eggs. Voila, Victoria Sponge, my favourite cake, is born. And it's the same with a nashi pear. Its texture is incredible. Right. It's almost like watermelon, kind of grainy crunch, loads of water, really cold when it's served. It's so delicious. The King Avo, Has King Avo, absolutely delicious. Pair these together. Fruit butter, crunchy like you've never had before. Bang, texture, Textures. experience mm. like never before. So we are about education on a cook's tour. And when it came to Korea, this is a kind of Japanese Korea and used throughout China as well. This is the go-to like our Williams or Comis that we use. Gotcha. It's a beautiful looking pair, great shape. It is a beautiful looking pair. So I'm going to grab a little perfect bowl. Pair. The perfect pair, Charlie. And those avos are, 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 are spot on we're, right. We're, we're both dads, we can get away with it. <laughs> So let's get a little bowl there. That's going to be our serving plate. Yeah. Now, I wonder if you would be so kind. There's always sort of a moment of truth when um, opening avocado as to whether it's going to be. Yeah, you know, we've, we've had a lot of chats about avocados we, recently. We almost talk too much about them, don't we? Yeah. Now, look at that. Now, strong. these are king avocados and they're from Mexico. And the reason they're called king avocados is because, as you can see, they have very few fibers. And it's the fibers that actually, as the fruit deteriorates, yeah. it starts to deteriorate from the, the, the top here, which is fine. Always a bit of disc discoloration is okay. And it goes through the roots. And sometimes, what's, what's worse, Saturday morning, bit of a hangover, need a little bit of you know, goodness in me, bang, you open it up and your avocado is wrecked. The King Avo is always going to... Never that. lets you down. No, so great avocado, and I call it fruit butter. Papaya, similar as well, but I just love, love the texture of... Um, I love the texture that avocado delivers, and when you pair that with a pear... <laughs> it's, not, it's been a long old yeah. week, hasn't yeah, it? You know, it's are flowing. Okay, so let's get the avocado there. We're actually, I'm going to show you a really clever way people 
have uh, done incredible things. You can make little roses with them, smash it up, mm -hmm. but we're not going to do that. We're going to play on some textures. So with your pear, we just want to, you can hear the crunch as it goes through. It's like snapping of a bit of bark. Mm -hmm. Now you taught me this in the summer. This is um, cheeking, isn't it? What's that, sorry? Cheeking. You're cheeking the pear when you're, when you're sort of taking cheeking off the... Cheeking the pear. Yeah, we do it with olives as well. So yeah. you take the cheeks off. Yeah. Nothing to do with cheeks, really. Strange, <laughs> strange types of chefs. Try that. Okay. Quite obnoxious skin. Mm. In your face. A bit like a broad bean skin. Like, what's the it flesh is really tasty. But you're right, yeah. the skin is... It is. Oh, that pork. It's getting wafts of that pork. I hope you guys are getting that at home. So... Mm. Beautiful texture, loads of water, and again, like avocado is a complete opposite. It's a bit like black and white, really, look good together, and that's what we're doing with textures here and flavours. So cheek, you can take a bit more off there, but I'm not going to pop that in my bin. And then we're just going to get some nice kind of little strips. Yeah. Now, chop this into whatever you want, pretty much. Maybe get some squares. You love sort of having sort of different sort of sizes as well as sort of... Yeah, um, well... The texture, I suppose, you know, it's, it's got a hate expression, but mouthfeel. Uh, and I guess you get that from having well, thin slices, fat slices, chunks, as, cigarettes. As my friend puts it, one of my very good friends, um, Tom, so if you're watching Tom, you'll love this. I, um, he just thinks that I peel carrots all day. <laughs> he says, yeah, mate, you know, you wash dishes and peel carrots. Yeah, a little bit. However, we've stretched on from there and we, we play with textures. What I do in cooking is quite simple. But searching, searching for new flavours, new textures, new excitement on the palate, mm. you've just got to cut a, new sh a few new shapes, use a different variety of pear or avocado, and you're in a whole different world. So, some nice little chunks in there. Yeah. And then we have got the most amazing. So this is going to be a nashi pear, avocado, tofu, sesame salad. So you will need now, guys, the tofu dressing, which is this. Have you got a spoon, Charlie? Try I that. I try some. Really This easy. is unreal. And guys, I've said it a few times in Outback and the last few destinations, get your spoons and these kind of like raw ingredients. Ooh. So you can see where we're going to take them with the rest of the ingredients. So you can look at the salt, mm. sweetness. That's good, isn't it? That's beautifully balanced. Korea uh, loves tofu, just like Japan as well. The back note in there is tofu. So we blend it with a bit of soy, a bit of sesame, a little bit of pear and apple juice, or one or the other, and that's it, really. That's There's simple. a similarity to sort of tahini in there. I was wondering... Uh, there's a bit of tahini in there as well. Oh, there we go. You're good. Told you, Charlie. <laughs> if, this, um, if this chat doesn't work out, you know, you come to my kitchen, mate, any day. It's got good chat, though, haven't you, Charlie? Well, um, yeah. I'm, and I'm, you do come in the kitchen anyway, I do. So you've got the best of both worlds. Exactly. So into the bowl, just toss it around a little bit, try not to make too much of a mess, and we're just going to build this in such a really cool, easy way. The other elements that we're going to need for this are we're going to take a little bit of this nori. Yeah. Let's just break a little bit of this. You can do this bit, so I'll pop that there for you, Charlie. Yeah. Okay. And also some little winter, no, no, we need the, the uh, beautiful heirloom radishes here. So, do you want to just open those up? To. These? Leave, leave, leave the water in there, just, okay. just, just pick them out, we're just going to chop those. Yeah. So let's bring this serving plate over here so everyone can see. You've got your avocado open. Yeah. Hope we're not going too fast for you guys at home. Do you remember you've got the pause button if we do get yeah. a bit carried away of ourselves. And this avocado, I'm going to teach you a little bit of plating skills here as well. Just kind of scoop the avocado out, and we're going to go with a nice kind of straight line across the plate, peeling carrots, he says. Watch this salad. It's going to be an absolute beast. So we just, again, those shapes that you're talking about, I'll do throw a few shapes after a few shandies. You never know after this. Gin, gin row? Yes. Have a couple of these, Charlie, and you might see a few new shapes for sure. Well, you'll be sort of avocado rosing again before we know it. Exactly. So half an avocado there, and then just across the plate, and then let's go with clean my spoon a little bit. And then just dance a little bit, this beautiful pear over here. We're just going to build a little bit of height as we go along. Guys, I don't just want to teach you new flavours. I want to teach you, I want to give you confidence. I want to introduce you to new methods, new ways of doing things, really. It's very, very exciting, this food we're cooking today. So why not make it look good as well? Oh, the colours are looking so good, and I'm looking forward to getting those Korean pickles on there too. So yeah. what, what, what are these? What are these Korean pickles? Um, it, well, basically, they are watermelon and purple meat radishes. So nice and peppery, and, uh, a little bit bitter. So you've got the sweet avocado, the kind of uh, in-your-face, crunchy pear, quite cucumbery watermelon, and you've got yeah. that real salty sesame dressing. And these are just going to play along with the textures on the plate and add some right. beautiful colour. And as well, they use loads of radishes all over Asia, but in Korea... Yeah. They love a radish, so I thought it would be a bit criminal for me not to not to get in there and use some. If you just want to pick a few out, yeah, 
and then you could be, I've got my sashimi knife here, so the wrong knife, but if you'd be so kind, just to kind of like, just give me a little bit of julienne. I'll tell you what, you could stack maybe three or four of them on top of each other, Charlie. Wow, okay. And just do that, and we're just gonna garnish the end of the plate with that. Yeah, learning new skills. So guys, I wanna see some MasterChef moments. I wanna see you just getting some little Tower of Pisa's going yeah. on there. And as ever, you know, do share photographs of your creations using yeah. our hashtag cook with rocket. And have we got Michael on the on the feed tonight? Michael is on the feed. Probably having a gin row right now, so do pester him. If you've got any yeah. questions, guys. Ask him any questions you may have. So look at this. Boom. As they say. So that pork. I just can't wait. It's all ready. I think this is the sharpest knife I've ever handled. Really? Possibly. Maybe it's just People a... don't sharpen knives, do they at home? I certainly don't. Okay, do, so. do, do you still have sort of, sort of the sharpening waller who comes around and sharpens? Yeah, I don't know what's happened exist? to them. I think this year might have been a bit of a difficult year. Yeah. But um, yeah, um, I, they ruin the knives really for me. Oh, do they? Yeah. How do you sharpen yours? Um, and steels and yeah, just with a steel really, yeah. and try and keep my wife away from them. <laughs> so I show, she says the knives are not that sharp. No, she 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 gets it quite a lot. She's a fantastic cook. But um, yeah, no, it's more about like, well, well chefs are very possessive yeah. about their knife. Why, why is my chestnut handle um, hand carved knife in the dishwasher, babe? <laughs> no answer. So we just keep it quite simple at home. Okay, yeah. so we've got a beautiful, I mean, look at that. The, wow. the aesthetics are very important. You've got all those beautiful flavors. Yeah. Use the rest of that dressing. I've got just a bit You're too much. Sort of, yeah, Jenga with Avo and pear here. It's, it's going to. Showing off, really, aren't we? Yeah, you guys at home, you can do just this. And then we're just going to dance on this beautiful. Kind of the reason we stack them up on each other is just so they just fall on nice little julienne. I mean, look at that. It's a belter. It's an absolute belter. It looks delicious. It's got all the colour, all the invites to say, come and eat me. Yeah. I'm ready. Well, okay. we so often talk about colour in food, don't we? And you sort of think in exactly. winter there's not much of it around, but it's a lie. Right, rip a bit of that off. I love nori. I do. Mm. But you feel a bit like a goldfish, don't you? <laughs> Fish food, I when I was a kid. Smells exactly the same, but this is such an important thing in Japan, in Korea. Yeah. You know, salt. We blend this up in a rocket kitchen. We kind of like dust it on. Um, you use it as a seasoning, don't yeah, you? Yeah, we do, and it's an incredible thing. And what it is, it's roasted seaweed, sea kelp, and on this as well, this adds a real rich kind of creamy saltiness and umami, which yeah. is absolutely phenomenal. So, Charlie, I'm happy with that. You get rid. Yeah, I tell you, I'm beside myself with joy. So, if you'd be so kind, let's can make I, um, a little bit of space. I can. Just, you're going to come back to these radishes, or can they be? Um, yeah, no, here, we can pop them in there, in making there. a bit of a mess, aren't we? Okay, no, that's right. Okay. Oh, here we go. Sort of a continual juggling act. So, my sushi rice, guys, if you want to have a look at yours. Yeah, let's see. My sushi rice is looking pretty good. I'm just going to have a little taste here. Should we bring it to your overhead cam? Yeah, I might have gone a little bit fast on there. So I'm going to put a touch more water. I don't know, if you guys want to have a look at yours now, sometimes when you go a little bit fast on the stove, okay. the water evaporates too fast. Could I just nick a little bit of some of this water? Is that okay? Yeah, of course. So, um, so I mean, the trick is, isn't it, with cooking, is, is sometimes it's, you know... Yeah, yeah there's a lot of balance, so I'm just going to pop so a couple... Just try things. A couple of, about four tablespoons in there. I just want it to cook out. The, the, the sushi master is folding a little bit. <laughs> it's one of those, as a cook as well, you've got to nurture what you're doing and just bring it to where you want it. And the thing about sushi rice is, it's like baking a cake. You know, if the, the oven's a bit too hot, you're going to get a, you know, a bit more colour and stuff like that, so I just need to go a little bit slower. Okay. On there. I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit. Give it a little bit more steam in. Cool, so, should we pop this down here? Yeah. And shall we check the pork? Let's see how the pork's getting on, and then yep. we can prepare the garnishes for the kimbap rolls, I think. I hope you guys have got some masterpiece going at home. This salad is so rewarding, so easy, and so little ingredients. You've got a dressing, some radish, some nori, a pear, mm. and avocado. Really that simple. Okay, so let's have a little look in here at this pork. Are you ready, Charlie? Look at this. Oof. Absolutely incredible. Wow. Oh my word, that really is um, its doing its thing, isn't it? And as you can see, get that on the camera as well, you just, you can already feel that fat crisping up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fat is really, you know, protein without fat is nothing. It's just too bland. Imagine boiling a chicken breast. Tastes of nothing, really. But then you sear a chicken breast, caramelize all that fat, and you get a beautiful mm. gold, and it's like roasted chicken as well. Mm. It's the same thing that we're trying to do here. Now that, that glaze that as well. basting or? Yeah, I think so. If, you, if, more you, glaze. if you've got a little bit more glaze as well. I've been playing with fire a little bit here, Charlie. 
in regards to uh, putting on such a small tray. Don't know why I've done that. So I'm going to pop it on well, a bigger yeah. tray for a little bit of safety. I do like danger. I'm not going to lie. You like challenging yourself, don't you? I do. So I'm just going to pop that on a bigger tray. If you're living with a bit of uh, fear that you put it on a small tray like me, maybe it'd be a good time to change. Okay. A bit of safety. There we go. So Let's pop that back in the oven. And you can feel the side as well. Look at that. You can just see as well, nice and soft, really warm. And that's what we're trying to do, crisp it and warm it through. That looks so good. That can go back in there. When it's done, we'll just yeah. leave the oven door ajar. And the pork is actually, it it's thing. all cooked, isn't it? So really, this is just a process of sort of caramelization yeah. um, and making it all unctuous and, and tasty. It is. So I was thinking just because our um, kimbap rolls need a little bit more time, why yeah. don't we just talk a little bit about the tempura and we can start to get that ready. Okay. So broccoli, tempura, do you remember the five spice beans from the summer? Um, yes, I do. Yes, they I do. Incredible. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I have to go did. all the way back you to, you can't forget that. Uh, to Japan, wasn't it? Japan. So we're going back to exactly. Japan. Yeah. So we've got a few incredible ingredients here. Tempura for me, like you can get tempura prawns, tempura pork, tempura chicken. But for me, Charlie, I don't know about you guys at home. I really, really love vegetables. I do. Crunchy, not yeah. quite cooked, rich kind of fried, light tempura on the outside. And today we're going to sex it up a little bit because we have got some incredible kimchi mayonnaise, which kimchi, again, massive in Korea. Uh, I should have brought one in, but it's uh, looking around for my Chinese cabbage that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't exist. So the Chinese cabbage, they literally ferment it. Yeah. And what they do is they leave it out at room temperature. They have some ginger, some aromats to it, and they let it ferment at room temperature. And then they can um, close it in the fridge and it becomes like a pickle. Yeah. A pickle with a little bit of fizz that then dies down and just becomes the most incredible. And it's got loads and loads of good bacteria for your gut mm. as well. And it's a way of preserving all those um, vegetables, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, have a, have a try of that. And like I keep saying, guys, at home, you have a try as well. Try everything. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, that's very good. And there's a little bit of, little bit of spice lurking there in the background too. There is. Yeah, that's lovely. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Guys, make sure you try that one first. I knew that was going to be hot. And Korea, Charlie, mm. Korea, in, in, as a whole, they love spicy food. Yeah. Chilies everywhere. Oof. And there's an acidity in there, isn't there? Yeah. What, I mean, so what are the sort of the, the, the profile, the flavor profiles then of sort of Korean food? Of Korea. So you've got, um, it's not a flavor profile, heat, but heat's it's massive. It's a big player, is it? Yeah. And then you've got sugar, salt, and acidity. Yeah. Probably... Salt and acidity are massive. So that's what we're always sort of looking to have yeah, yeah, yeah. balance and one playing against the other. Yeah, definitely. So we'll set this up while waiting for the sushi rice. You know what? I gave it the big one at the beginning, Charlie. You have a look at the sushi rice here. Mm. So what you want to do is just want to flake it and just have a look at that as it's cooking. It might be a little bit dry on top, but that's okay. Just flake it around. You've got a beautiful kind of grain just steam in there. I still think this needs potentially. Let's try that. No, I think that's there, actually. Yeah? Yeah. Just going to leave it for a couple more minutes. OK. Heat's still on? Yeah, heat's still on. OK. With the lid on. The sushi master sounds like he's folding, doesn't he? But it's uh, a few things, just like we keep checking on the pork, getting it where we want to, the rice as well. Yeah. I went a little I bit fast. They're, they're looking for a bit of bite. So You're looking for, it. yeah, not, not, bite, not chewy, yeah. but you don't want it to be like normal cooked rice. El dente, yeah. as they say. Definitely not street. rice pudding. No, <laughs> no. Definitely not. We had a little bit of a situation this week with uh, one of my uh, junior chefs, phenomenal cook, but uh, we had a bit of a joke. So he put some rice in the oven, got all his water messed up, and um, yeah, let's just say it was savoury rice pudding. That's fine. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, what we want to do, we've got a simple, simple tempura mix here. Mm -hmm. We've got one egg. So the kimchi dressing and this beautiful Parmesan sesame toasted crumb, a bit of nori in there as well, as we talked about as a seasoning mm -hmm. uh, for the finish. But it would be a good time now to get your oil on. So I think I've advised for like three, 400 um, mil of oil. You want to get that on now, get that heat into about, I should probably get mine on as well, Charlie, what do you think? Yeah. So we probably want to get that heated up to about 190, but we'll test that with a little bit of broccoli. Now, simple tempura mix, 50-50. So in there we've got... 50-50, 50 50% um, 50 of it, so 50 grams of plain flour, 50% mm -hmm. um, straight rice flour. And the reason we do that oh, is... St straight rice, rice flour. Rice flour, yeah, rice flour is beautiful. Why 50-50? What's the... Because you need the proteins and the, the, the glutens in the flour to yeah. bind and give you that nice batter. But then the rice flour gives you uh, everlasting crisp. Normal, normal flour will just go soft after a little bit. 
Um, but yeah, it'll be really, really crispy. Okay. So just get my, where did my little rubbish uh, bowl go? Can I have that back? Is that okay? Yeah, of course. So Charlie, do you want to do the honors? Because you're a bit yeah, of a master at it, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. This is your thing. I, just um, get, I, I don't know if it's this, is this geranium in here? Well, the flowers. I don't know what it is, yeah, the flowers in there. I keep getting a waft of it, it's, it's very inviting. I'm gonna go back. Yeah, there you go. So you can just crack it that. and So the, what am I looking for, the, the egg, egg yolk? The egg so yolk. The yolk. Yeah. yeah, and just while you're doing that, uh, now would be a good time, guys, just to give your broccoli just a little bit of a dust. Crikey, this is indestructible. Oh, here we go. So a little bit of a dust in the tempura flour is just gonna help the batter stick. Don't worry if it doesn't really stick that often, it, uh, that much. But basically, broccoli is quite smooth. I just want to give it a little bit of so a. So, was that of giving a, a bit of grip? A little bit of grip. There you go. So, I just love this food. The smells from that pork. This drink in front of me, I am very excited to try. You are in sort of chef heaven, aren't you? I am. I, do you know what? Japanese food is probably my favourite, but Korea is just right there. And it's what? because I'm learning, learning yeah. so much about it at the minute. When, once I get really deep into it, where it's quite new, but maybe last year or two. Should I pop this in the middle? Yep, pop that in the middle. Why, do you, why do you think Korean food is, the, the, the sort of the scene is thriving? Um, I mean, it's particularly here in London, isn't it? I mean, I I would, I would Korean barbecues. Yeah, I, I, would I would probably say it's because, I don't know, I think, I think um, English culture, you know, we're like mad pies, aren't we? We've kind of gone out, we've got so many flavors from fish and chips. We love uh, kind of like Indian food. Yeah. We love Chinese food, all these flavors. And in Japan, kind of like, when I was younger, no one, uh, raw fish, I'm not eating that. Now everybody eats sushi. So it's like a trend that's coming in. I think, you know, there's a lot more confidence yes. right now, not just in the London bubble where we live, but with people as well, they want new things. And I think uh, Korea's just coming through. Everyone thinks Korean food is just a barbecue. It's not, there's so much more to offer. And that's what we're doing here. But um, I think it's just on trend because it's, um, we're ready for it. Yeah. We're ready for something new. And it's coming in there, it's sitting right behind all this kind of amazing sushi and Japanese food that we see all over the place, so. Um, and I suppose it's all those yeah. flavors we were talking about earlier. It's all that sort of sweet and sour. Yeah, the, the yeah, yeah, definitely. the heat. Exactly. So we've got an egg yolk in there and we've got 100 grams of flour. And then we want to go, I'm putting the instructions for you guys, we want to go in here with about 130 to 140 mil. And the okay. reason there's a little bit of room there is because um, in transit or whether it's cold, the flour it can condense a little bit. But essentially, we're looking for a tempura for a nice, you know, crepe suzette? Oh, uh, the them. classic dish. Yeah. But for the crepe batter, a nice kind of runny batter. So if you'd be so kind just to pour this in, Charlie. As uh, You just want to give it a little mix. We don't want to overbeat it. So in for a really, really nice batter. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. As you can see, nice. Nice kind of mix there. And then you don't want to mix it too much. Don't worry about mixing all the flour. You just want a nice little. Uh, so you're happy with that sort of consistency? Yeah, and you know, the, my thing about tempura is the more you mix it, the more you work those gluten. So even though I haven't mixed all the outside, I'm cool with that. Now the reason is. So it's you treat it very delicately. Yeah, like it's, like a, it's like a cake if you, or the yeah. scones. If you overwork them, they become really tight and compact. You don't want that. So okay. I haven't mixed all the flour, but I'm happy with the consistency. And we're just going to coat these up like so and leave a little bit you know I like it looking quite quite rough and we're just going to sit that against the bowl there dip all that in and then just sit it there this will be nice nice kind of like variants on the broccoli do you know what that might not fit in my pan <laughs> <laughs> so yeah if you're using a small pan as well yeah. let's get some bite-sized bits in trim there. those stalks yeah just pop that over there so I'll just trim those off in one do you know what, as well, researching some of these dishes, the salad I just made up, almost like a bit of a dream mm. out of nowhere. The kimchi mayo is something that we do at Rocket on a few of our canapes, so that came together quite easy. And then um, the rest is kind of made up a little bit. Um, from the research, I just yeah. got really inspired. Where but, does your inspiration come from then for these dishes? And for well, like I said, my, my kind of uh, Asian kind of journey with the culture of Asian food from Malaysia and Indonesia and yeah. um, Korean and Japanese started when I worked for a private family as a private chef. Yeah. And uh, the mister uh, of the house, he said, I want you to understand how I want to eat. I was like, okay, he's got a good life, hasn't he? <laughs> Off I went to some of the most amazing restaurants that he eats at. And um, he gave me about 40, 50 dishes between the restaurants that wow. I needed to try and how they were presented. And I just got so obsessed. So, you know, we're, we are in a very, very uh, uh, world of access these days. So, you know, I started... Um, searching YouTube, getting lost in blogs and buying some uh, books and just getting really inspired really. And that's how it all kind of came together. So just dip that in there. Don't worry if your broccoli is not uh, completely covered. And let's just set that aside. Great. Then I'm gonna clean up a little bit. Uh, we'll check our rice and we should be good to 
go on that. Could I have that? You keep taking all my stuff away. I do. Right. I keep moving things away. I'm sorry. Okay, so let's get rid of some of this. Well, I just didn't think sort of, you know, the, the bit bowl looked that savoury on the overhead cam. No. <laughs> or, or my mess that I keep making. <laughs> Do you know what? Right, I've got a fantastic team, and uh, you, they, they tell me. You're a very tidy, tidy cook. I mean, I know that. You know, you like to have your kitchen. A bit OCD. In... Yeah. It's, uh, uh, I blame a lot of that on my mum. My mum was incredibly organised, a yeah. uh, single parent family, and we had to make our bed as soon as we got out of it. And it was like that throughout the house, and then working with some quite aggressive chefs. Yeah. Organisation is key, getting all your parts of the puzzle, cleanliness, your food ready, to go into yeah. service, cook someone a fantastic meal. So yeah, organisation really, I think that comes if you, no one wants to see a messy chef. No. Dirty nails, stuff all over the board, no thank you, I'll be straight out of that restaurant. That's why I see you so often in the nail bar. <laughs> yeah, you see me there. I've seen you there. Around my neck of the woods. Okay, so the sushi rice guys, beautiful, there Have we are. Have yep, I am. And you just want to flake. Notice I'm not like stirring it around going, yeah, look at me and my sushi master. No, I'm not. You've got to have a little bit of finesse. And you just want to kind of flake it. And the reason we do that is we don't want to break the grains. My, um, my, my wife sometimes, she, she, like I said, she's a phenomenal cook. She's getting a lot of air time today, isn't she? <laughs> but she, um, she cooked some rice a couple of weeks ago. Perfect. I said, what have you done to it? And she was just over stirred it. It's a shame. You can do all the right things with the rice and then just ruin it by not treating it right. You should never ever stir rice, you should always fluff it. And that's what we're doing here, just gentle little kind of like, letting it roll on itself like so. And we are looking for quite a, a nice bit of bite in this rice. There we go, so I think we're ready to go. We'll leave that there, we're gonna work with that hot. Shall we check on our pork? Yes. Oh, Charlie, Ooh, there. Yeah. So I'm gonna turn my oven off now. Okay. That's ready, shall I bring it out for the guys yeah, to have a look at? Let's have a look. Whoa. Heavens. Look <laughs> at that. And like it's incredible actually how much it has reduced in size. Yeah. And that's all the fat just oozing out, isn't it? We do offer a lot of value. You know, we really want to make you guys at home really, really happy. Yeah. But for me as well, it's a fatty piece of meat. You know, you're going to get quite overwhelmed eating a lot of it. It's a bit like, I like to look at pork. It's as delicious as Wagyu beef as well, but you can't eat a lot. So perfect portion for two there. I could just stare at that all day. <laughs> okay. And it smells delicious. So I'm going to leave my oven door open now or yeah. just a jar and just leave that hot, ready to go. Oh, Charlie, yes. Mm. But if yours needs a little longer, then leave it a little longer. Yeah, but yeah, should be good. But it should be so good. So let's turn that off. Turn that off. Onto the sushi rolls, yeah. we go. Kimbap rolls. Okay. So this is a sort of, well, I mean, you said it, this is a, a, a Korean sushi, is it? It is, now kimbap is usually an appetizer. Yeah. So we'll make a couple of these each, Charlie. Oh, okay. Let's decant some of these. Does that mean we can sort of snack as we go along? Yeah, we can do, why not? <laughs> why not? Um, if you'd be an absolute gentleman. Yes, always. Absolute gentleman for me, and then just pop. What else have we got there? So we could probably get away with using my last bowl. So let's pop these in here. So these Korean pickles, like we said, we've got heritage carrots, radishes in there. Now the reason we haven't, people would be like, sushi, he said he knows a lot about it. He hasn't put no sugar and vinegar in there. No, because we're gonna use some pickles. Have a little waft of those, waft, mm. waft, waft. They smell beautiful. They really do. And, they, and yeah, pickles, again, like the kimchi fermented, um, the Korean culture is all about kind of, like I said, acidity, rich meats, and this with the pork. You've got the starchy rice, the saltiness coming from the roasted seaweed, and I'm just gonna wrap some of these pickles up there. We've got some pink ginger, we've got a little bit of garlic in there. Do have a little fish around, guys. You've got one piece of garlic in there, which I'm gonna very cleverly give to Charlie. <laughs> uh, it will be pickled, so you'll get away with it, but if you like garlic. Okay. So um, let's pop that over there. One piece of garlic in there, remove that. So you've got some carrots, radish, ginger, now, Charlie, I'll do mine first. Okay. So we just want to cut this into four. So straight across we go. Wow, your knife's not so sharp now, is it? Do you know what? Nori's just one of those things. It's one of those things. You need to yeah, if you, yeah, if you don't, if you're not gentle, you, you kind of need to like kind of just press through it. It will just tear. You're probably so. too young to remember, but do you remember in the sort of the 70s and 80s they'd have those sort of handheld electric carving? I do, my mum had one. <laughs> awful. <laughs> they were pretty awful and they'd absolutely yeah. murder the meat. So do you want to do the same, if you can? What would you do if I appeared with one of those attacking your pork belly? Yeah, I'd send you uh, out of the kitchen. Out of the kitchen, away. straight away. So what we're going to do is, so um, kimbap, like we said, why does it differ from sushi? You can call it sushi, but that's Japanese name for it. Kimbap is usually a little appetizer, 
um, of, uh, sometimes just pinched together, which we will do a couple of different ones, pinched together with some rice and some pickles. They do use fish, but predominantly you see in Korea, sure. especially um, in, in Seoul, in the kind of eateries, you will see pickled vegetables. It's a okay. great way to start before a nice bit of fatty pork. So it's quite green, this nori. I'm, I'm used to sort of seeing it. But it's just really, really, just seaweed. really high quality, roasted. So it should be um, quite, quite clean. You okay. can, you know, it's like everything. You get different oh. qualities. There we go. Perfect. So Charlie, we are literally going to just pop some of this rice, which in. is still sort of nice and warm. Yeah, That's I'm going to do a couple of different ones for you guys at home. So as well, if it starts sticking to your hands, just have we got a little bowl there. We can pop some water in. Yeah. Just pop a touch of water in there, and you guys do that at home as well. We we'll pop a little bit of rice in here. And you're gonna see these and you're not gonna be that impressed, but the flavor is incredible. So a little bit of water and you just tease the rice off there, it won't stick to your hands. So if you just want to make Charlie. Yeah. Four of these up yourself, if you okay. left you enough rice. So let's do three each. Let's do three. These are amazing. I absolutely love these. Okay. So, hope you guys so, can see everything. I'll bring the pickles down here so you can. Same amount of rice. I see what you mean. It's quite sticky, isn't it? It is. Just your, wet, wet your fingers and then just tease it off and it won't stick. Got you. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to show you guys at home. With this one, I'm going to wet, wet the fingers a little bit. Not too much. Don't want to get the seaweed too wet. I'm just going to tease that rice out into the closest third, if we're rolling that way, to me, like, like so. I'm going to get some of those pickles, drain a little bit of liquid off. I'm just going to pop those, flare them out of the end as well. Everyone at home going, oh my God, I'm rolling sushi. And you don't need a mat either. I'm just gonna roll that over. Again, wet hands, just tease it up. It can be a bit fidgety, but just be confident. Get in there, we're just gonna roll these around like that into almost like little cigars. Crazy. And then a little bit of water on the end, just to seal. And there you go. That's immaculate. That's immaculate. Look at that. Wow. I've done it a few times. <laughs> So let's get our little plate here. And as we make them, we'll just stack them up. Now you're probably thinking, with, with those ones, why don't you make a few little cigars? I'll pop the pickles over there for you, Charlie. And then with these ones, we're gonna go corner to corner. So we're gonna put them almost like, um, what, what, what would you call that shape, Charlie? A diamond? A diamond, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a long week. It has been a long week. I was thinking I'm just doing shapes with my son and he's, <laughs> he's four years old at reception. So um, there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm on top of my shapes at the moment. There we go. So. A few of those pickles, so you're going to roll it over nice and tight, Charlie, and then just yep. before you seal the end, dip some water, roll it, and then roll it over. A bit of water there. This is really challenging my, um, my, my rolling skills. Well, as well, we want to give you guys some fun at home, but we also want to give you, uh, you know, some new skills. Do I need to just... You need to wet that bit there. Uh -huh. So just okay, so wet it, wet. roll it on the board, nice and firm. This is great, look at this. Do you know this what, with a pork, I'm just going to bring that out. You're having a pork panic? Yeah, no, I just don't want it to go too far. I suppose it needs to rest a bit too, no? Yeah, it, it wouldn't harm it too. How's that, chef? I quite like the way yours has got the looks little good. sort of, you're, you're teasing with a little bit of the pickle out the end. It looks so, good. watch this one. So then this one, just goes straight over into a little triangle, and then we're just gonna flatten it like a little. So you see these like ones? Like a wonton. Got, like a wonton. And this yeah. is literally, you'll see the guys having a uh, Jinro drink in, in the city of Seoul, and then just eating like this, almost like a little taco. Incredible. So let's sit that one in the middle there. And then awesome. maybe just, what about a cone? We could try a cone. So let's get creative. So yeah. let's just get a few more pickles here, and then we'll move on to our lovely tempura. So I'll make. Do you want to make another roll? Or? Um, yeah, I, I might want to try and do one of those triangular ones. The sort okay. Of the the, the, the or the wonton, or whatever. I might back. do a, a big roll that way then. So really sort of. The thing is about nori as well. It's literally like crafts at school. You can just make whatever you want. It's like pasta for the Italians. They just make whatever they want and give it a name. Oh, look at that, it looks like a moon. Mezza luna. <laughs> there we go. We've got a new pasta shape. And it's a bit what we're doing here, making genius. it up as we go along. It is genius. And that's what food should be about, Charlie. It should be about creativity, yes. having fun. The flavor and the presentation should be an equal part for me. Definitely flavor first. Presentation is something that just comes as an added bonus. However, it's got to be fun when you're cooking as well. So get involved. Do you oh, listen oh, to music when you cook? In yes. fact, I follow you on Instagram and you, you seem to be I do like a bit the of tunes on, on the gram. I do, and a multi genre as well. It might be a what bit, do you of, to, bit of two pack one day, a bit of Arctic Monkeys the next, yeah, Red Hot Chili Pepper, bit of K pop. Why not?
perfect for tonight. We should have had it on in the background, for having sure. a good old time. So there's our beautiful Charlie. Oh, that, one more, one more, one more, one more. That looks amazing. Look at that. Yes. Woof. That looks amazing. Do you want can to... you can you do a swan? No. <laughs> I would love I would love to be able to do that. I'll pop that in there for you, Charlie. Okay. You can roll the last one. Give me that back. Perfect. Uh, okay. I know what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to go. I'm, I'm doing this. this pork, Charlie. It's just looking at me. And this one. What are we going to do with this one? Remember, remember Sheila? Oh, yeah. What I was thinking about I could give this one a little kiss as well. Look at that. Amazing. And a bite at the same time. Where should I put him? In the middle? Yeah. Yeah, pop it down there. In the middle. Sorry, it's a bit of a... You've got the chef eye. And if you just want to pop it down there, and we will go on to a bit of tempura, Does that have a, um, a dip or a dressing or...? It does, yeah. yeah. So we've got a mustard dressing here. And this, guys, this is the most simple when you get the recipes. Mustard, soy, water, sugar, and rice wine vinegar. And it's literally English mustard. Why not? Shh. You know, you, you could use a bit of wasabi in there. Yeah. So true to the times, Charlie. Okay. No close cuddles. No. Not tonight. Maybe a little bit of rib <laughs> touching. But our own little dipping pots as oh, well. Yeah. Just so we can... Nice. There we go. Incredible, really, really lovely, beautiful little appetizer sitting next to that beautiful salad. We've got a tempura, our pork on the go. And how's the oil doing? Is that up to temperature? Let's have a little check. So guys, just dip that in. As you can see, it's half coated. What you want to do, check that oil. How do we say it? Sizzle, sizzle. Sizzle, sizzle. And yeah. you can see that's just perfect. So I would say, Charlie, that's literally probably about, you want to go tempura as hot as possible, but I want you to be safe as well. So I would say about 190 yeah. is a good setting. So you've got that broccoli there. Let's pop that in. And if your oil's not to temperature yet, just press the space bar, wait for it to come up. Yeah. And then you can always catch up in a sec. I'll see you tomorrow with your tempura. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So people at home making like, um, what's it, is it origami? Yeah. When you make all the shapes. Yes. We'll see some like we'll Mickey and Minnie Mouse faces out of all the nori on the feed. Michael, I hope you're uh, getting some lovely questions about that. So yeah, uh, if you, be careful of this as well. Brassicas in general, when you put them in the fryer, kales, broccoli, they hold a lot of water. You go into that hot oil, they do like to spit. So just be uh, aware, maybe a little lid at the side starts to spit a little bit. In we go on top and then run. No, not really. Just be careful, as always, guys, hot oil not to be messed with. So, that's sizzling away. I'm gonna get myself a little tray here, Charlie. And what is it, a few minutes in there? Yeah. If, what are you, if you looking that. for, just a, a change in color or? Yeah, we're just looking, it shouldn't really be too long, maybe 40 seconds or so. Okay. So, let me make myself a little bit of space there. Yeah. Beautiful pork, and sit over there. And then, yeah, we're just looking for a little bit of crispiness. Oh, so yeah. if just feel on here, just feel the crispiness there. You've got asbestos fingers, you can touch anything. Yeah, if you notice, it's just straight out of the fryer. Maybe not advised, guys. So, that can come out, that's perfect. So yeah, you're looking 40 seconds, a minute. We just want that uh, broccoli to crisp up a little bit. And again, it's like cucumber. Great, nice, uh, beautiful texture, raw. I love broccoli raw. Mm. And uh, cooking it for this amount of time is almost leaving it semi-raw. Have we got the rest of that broccoli? Yeah, sorry, I was... Um, Charlie shortchanging us. I was shortchanging you. So, nice generous amount of uh, broccoli there. That can go in. Then Charlie, the, the, the sad moment has come when I got to start the last dish. It was such a good time. Amazing. Well, all good things come to an end, don't Yeah. They? Okay. And then we get to eat. We do. So while that broccoli is going there, I would say, let's concentrate on that, guys. Don't take too much on. But I'll start talking about the next dish while the guys are doing that. Yeah. Maybe. So our last dish, and this is, guys, classically, a classic Rhinism. Yes, yeah. it is. Don't worry. I am a chef. I've got that under control. But I know you guys are concentrating. So just a bit of chat about the next dish while you're um, doing that. This is a classic Rhinism. because This um, is a classic Rhinism. Mac and Kim cheese. Uh, you know, I don't know. I haven't come across that in my research of career. But, it's but probably because it, it doesn't really e exist. <laughs> I've seen a few variants, you know, the New York scene as well, a bit like uh, London, like to take a lot of cultures and switch on the head. It's a bit of my style, it's a bit of rocket style, isn't yeah. it? Like to keep it fresh. So mac and cheese, who doesn't like it? So many variants. You can have truffle mac and cheese, beef short rib mac and cheese, or just the usual beautiful mac and cheese. So I thought, you know, paying testament to really sexy dishes and real unctuous kind of dish that we need now in December, why not mac and cheese? And I just couldn't keep it normal. Rice pasta is a thing, guys. You're looking at this going, what the is this? And it is, it's macaroni made out of rice. It's beautiful, it's got a lovely bouncy texture. And we're gonna use that instead of normal pasta. 
Great. Just playing into the corner. And this is your sort of way. your cheesy kimchi sort of. Yep. So in here we've got Chinese Irish. cabbage. We've got some blended kimchi, mm. chopped kimchi, some uh, gochu, gochu gang. Yep. Um, we've got a little bit of sesame in there, a little bit of soy, and then we've got wait for it, gria, parmesan, cheddar, Ooh. and camembert. Ooh. <laughs> Just because we can. Mac and cheese has to be a little bit filthy. <laughs> That's the way we're doing it. We're going to do it properly. It's December. Come on. We, we'll yeah. think about it in January, yeah? We'll so go back uh, to that. Yeah. So just finishing off on the broccoli here. Mac and Kim for cheese. Mac and Kim, yeah. Mac and, yeah, yeah. maybe don't tell your doctor or your, uh, your, your yoga teacher or your, your gym buddy about this one. Cheese. <laughs> can be a triple barrel. Okay, so... Gym buddy. <laughs> Gym buddy. So let's pop the last pan on yep. for the mac and cheese. So I don't want to get too hot. Turn this oil off. The oil is off. Yeah, and I'm going to do the right thing, guys. Oil to the back, nice and safe. Away from the heat. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm going to put a lid over it so it's nice and safe. Charlie, do not put your hands in there. I shan't. Okay. So the pork can just sit over here. We've got our broccoli ready to go, ready to plate. So onto the last dish. Guys, really, really simple. This beautiful sauce that we've got here. Where is my spoon? Do you have a spoon? There? Yeah, I've got one here. Thank you so much. So spoon, sauce, goes straight Ooh. in. And all we're doing is just heating this through. Couldn't be easier. We've got beautiful sauce, naughty sauce, delicious sauce. Yeah. It's, uh, it is very, very delicious. So this is very much an easy on the, on yeah. sort of the cooking ratings here. It is. And then pasta goes straight in at the same time. Dare I say it, it's like one of those bachelor's numbers, isn't it? Just straight in with the water. So that's going to be to finish. Shall we get some plates up here? Yeah. To start plating. Shall I move the board out? Yeah. If we're at that stage. That would be amazing. Thank you, Charlie. Ooh. Just smells so good. This is my food. I just can't wait to get in there. So we've got the salad ready to go. Yeah. Kimbap and the dip ready to go. Shall we put the mac, mac and cheese in there? Perfect. And the pork in there. Pork there. And the broccoli. Yes. There. Let's do that. So all we're looking for, guys, is just to move this around a little bit and get a little bit of heat in there. That cheese sauce will loosen up a little bit. We just want to heat it through. The pasta's perfectly cooked. The rice macaroni. It's a bit scary looking, the rice macaroni. Is it very strange? But I think that's a, that's a joy when you go to a new country and you see something. You're like, wow, look at those prawns. You don't see those at home. It's about the experience. And, um, well, I mean, where, where did you find that? Did you, did you have to go to a... Yeah, a dodgy car park somewhere in South London. <laughs> no, it's, um, it was, there's some beautiful, beautiful um, cash and carries. Um, the Japan Centre in Piccadilly, yeah. if you're in London, Chinatown in Manchester's great, and in uh, Birmingham, Liverpool. Been to all the Chinatowns there, and you'll find as well, in, in this kind of area, Korean shops as well. They kind of yeah. stretch into Japanese and Chinese. So, while that's heating through, shall we start to plate? Yeah. It's that beautiful, beautiful pork, asbestos hands. Look at that. That is sexy. There's no other word. We talked about sexy tomatoes. That is sexy pork. Look. Hello. And then let's not mess around. It's just yeah, what are you going to do with that? So I'll tell you what, have we got some glaze left? Or is we it do. Gone? No, no, it's here. But that glaze is absolutely delicious. So let's use a little bit of that. Another spoon? Yeah, I'm running out of spoons there, aren't I? Oh, no, no. So a bit of that, a bit of that glaze on there. Get a little bit chef as well. Over the top, just kind of wet it up a little bit. That's perfect. And then, it wouldn't be a beautiful dish without a little bit of weirdness at the end. Pork popcorn, we're literally taking the skin, a little bit of Korean salt on there, and we're just gonna put some pork popcorn over the top, as you do. Wow, and just, I tried some of this in the kitchen. I tried a I bit more. Say, I was just blown away. It's got everything, it's all the texture of popcorn. It's delicious. So, we've got the pork, oh, the kimbap, the dip, bad. So a beautiful good. drink there. We've got a beautiful bowl here for the mac and kim cheese. That looks absolutely delicious. It looks so wrong at the same <laughs> time. But it's uh, the smell as well. There's a real sourness to it coming from that kimchi, which I really, really like. Um, okay, you've got some more dressings here. Yep, so we are going to go with the garlic crumbs. So you've okay. got a garlic crumb, which has got a little bit of sesame in there. And the garlic crumbs just going to go on top, which has got a little bit of salt. You'll see some beautiful, I'm, I'm obsessed. Look at this, Charlie. Just seeing it. Malden sea salt, beautiful salt producer. Look at that. Look at that. That's a thing of beauty. That is one of the most beautiful minerals on the planet. Salt, used correctly, it's an absolute beautiful magnifying glass into everything that is delicious. Mm. Over the top like that, texture, you got soft pasta, creamy sauce, nice bit of crunch on top. Why not? And then let's go with the last dish. So we've got the tempura. 
And this, Charlie, is naughty. You think you've lived. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Tempura Broccoli. This is a game changer right here. This is going to separate. They said men, men from the boys, yes. women from the girls. There we go. Let's stack that up. Upside down. Real naughty. Jenga, again, just to make it look good. As we said, let's turn all those stoves off. Oh, I'm just not on there. <laughs> there, it is so amazing. I'm running out of spoons, but I can't. No, no, we don't. Let's, let's get a little bit oh, naughty with this okay. one. Look at this. Let's get a close up on that. Oh, oof. Wow. Sound effects in there. Oh, my God, Charlie. Happy days. We Christmas has we, come early for you. We are not messing around there. And we want to finish with a beautiful. So, we'll talk about umami yeah. in Japan in the summer. You've got in there zingy dressing, you've got fried, crunchy broccoli, tempura, and a richness, and then umami. Let's go. We're going to make a mess. Let's put it all over the table yeah, 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 as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got some parmesan, some sesame. Look at that. I'll be, I'll be here for the next six hours cleaning the floor. <laughs> there you that go. That looks brilliant. And then some winter leaves. So these, these guys are from Cornwall. In your recipe that you've got in your instructions, it'll say add coriander. You've got coriander in here. I wanted to switch it up last minute. So you've got a, a Cornish uh, organic farm. Um, called Olo Farm and Good Earth Growers, and they do these beautiful little leaves here. And you're just going to dance it over yeah, everything. we're just going to dance it over everything, add a little bit of texture. Over the table. A little bit of love. This is the point, do you know what, I'm, I'm a little bit humble and a little bit cocky at times. But this is one of those where I should just drop the mic, boff, and walk, because this is food right here, guys, and I hope you've enjoyed cooking that as much as I have, and Charlie, we're going to tuck in. Yeah, wow, we are ending get the season this done. on a real high note. Um, Ryan, thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. We should do some tasting, shouldn't we? We should. Let's do it. Uh, uh, probably... Do we have spoons left? We've got knife and forks. I've got, I've got forks. I'm going to try um, just a little bit of the... Um, the Charlie, mat. before you do, oh. let's get down have a look. Look at side view on that. That is banging. Yeah, well done. What are you going for? I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to try this pair because I really want to see how that has that. With your works. mat pointer and mm. my, my pork killer, we're going to... Oh, mm. look at that. Look at that, Charlie. Ding dong. That's just how you want it, isn't it? Oh. Whilst Ryan is now engaged in eating pork belly, I've probably got 30 seconds mm. of um, camera time to myself. So it's probably time to say um, a big thank you to all of you for joining us for this first season of um, A Cook's Tour with Rocket. And also just wow. want to make a special thank you, of course, to Ryan, but also to all those behind the scenes um, here at the studio, but also on the A Cook's Tour team, um, from chefs to um, box packers to everyone involved in, in the marketing and everything in the back office. So huge thanks and appreciation to all huge of them. Thank you. For their incredible work um, to make this all happen for us and for you at home. Um, remember to keep posting your pictures of your incredible creations using the hashtag a cook with, uh, cook with Rocket um, and use Rocket social handles too. So let's, um, let's, let's flood Instagram with um, your amazing creations. Um, if you're like me and um, well, slightly panicking about Christmas presents, then fear not, because there's still time to um, go to the Cook's Tour website and purchase what a, um, a voucher. Yeah, what a present. What a present. Because we're back on the 14th of January, we are. where we are going to go to Marrakesh for a night at the Medina, which is going to be very, very special. Go on, very quickly, what are we expecting? Morocco, nights at the Medina, it's January, we're going to go veggie. We're going further. We're going vegan. Yes. We are going all the way. But guys, I'm going to show you how to deliver vegan food. You are going to become vegan at least one day a week after this. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. Marrakesh, Nights at the Medina, all over Morocco. Flavors coming to you in January. That's 14th of Jan. Then we go to wild, uh, wild Norway, where Johan is going to be back making some Negronis. Uh, and then, of course, we nip off to Venice and some incredible other destinations on our in continued global tour. So please do join us. Um, for that. Um, so I think that's it. That's it. I want to yeah. get took into this. I know the guys in the studio as well, they can smell it. They can smell it. They want to do it. So with that, thank so you with very that, much. So we'll say, um, as we do at Rocket, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And a Rocket New Year. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.